Welcome back. Immortalizing our icons isn't new. Madame Tussauds, Wax Museum, and holographic concerts are proof of that. But what if we could actually talk to these people? Well, joining me now are two people working on just that. Travis Cloyd, he's CEO and co-founder of Worldwide XR, is a global futurist focused on technologies around AI, machine learning, and more. He's currently working on the film Back to Eden, which will feature a digital human named James Dean. That James Dean. Also joining me is Kathleen Haas, former USC, uh, from the USC Institute of Creative Technologies, Vision and Graphics Lab, where she's focusing on AI-generated virtual humans. And her work, by the way, is primarily funded by the Department of Defense. We will ask her about that. So Travis and Kathleen, welcome to Meet the Press Reports. And Kathleen, let me start with a little bit of a vocabulary lesson. So there's, you know, before AI became such a buzzword in the mm -hmm. last six months, deep fakes was yep. something. Is there a, what's the difference between a deep fake and an AI generated human? Well, a deep fake is a 2D, um, mm -hmm. uh, a 2D uh, uh, technique mm -hmm. and uh, it is embedded in video and uh, it's very effective. We've seen a number of them, they look very cool. Uh, but the AI based approach to uh, face replacement mm -hmm. is a different process. It is a CG face mm -hmm. and in our lab we do a, a sort of a hybrid approach where we take, uh, we have a morphable model that's um, developed from numerous uh, light stage scans and mm -hmm. that gives us all the reflectance data which means we can relight the, the skin. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we marry that with uh, the highest resolution 4D mm -hmm. video that you can find and you can do a little uh, encoding and decoding over here and a little machine learning encoding decoding over there, secret sauce, mix it together and then you output this pretty fantastic looking um, photorealistic uh, AI uh, uh, yeah. CG face and, and it's animatable completely, it can uh, animate yeah. it by texture, I mean, by, excuse me, by text to speech mm -hmm. or or audio or anything. So it sounds like a deep fake is like using whiteout and writing over it, it sounds like, right? It's yeah. like cut and paste a sure. little bit. Um, but the set AI generated, obviously you said it's a little bit more. Now, you, we put a, we gave you a photo of me mm -hmm. and you did an AI generation and you did it in 24 hours. Yeah. Now, uh, I wish you'd given me a little more hair. <laughs> uh, I, I, so literally, so this, we gave you the highest, we did not give you a 4K resolution for what it's worth. Right, um, right. So how would you advise somebody to be able to figure out, well, what's fake there? I mean, obviously I know it's fake with the hairline and all of that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, it, uh, it, it's uh, still up in the air, we, you mm -hmm. know, as far as uh, how you detect whether that's a deep fake or a fake. Are you putting watermarks in? Are you guys thinking about this yet? Or no? We're thinking about it, for sure. I mean, we're a research lab, so we, we're now just, we're developing, you know, computer vision research lab at USC, mm -hmm. uh, funded by the Army mainly, and um, our... Um, our main focus is research and publications. So we're, mm -hmm. we're sort of, you know, for the greater good, generating uh, knowledge uh, in the topic, and um, we're putting together these really amazing, uh, you know, um, uh, capabilities. Right. Um, all the other parts of those is not really our department. So. And how long did that take? Uh, yeah, it took. Um, by the time they got it, it took a couple of hours actually. So literally, really in a couple of hours, you could generate. You know, with the with the right type of yeah. equipment, you can generate essentially yeah. a fake human. Yeah, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Travis, you're about to make a movie with a fake human. <laughs> yes, James we are. Dean. Um, look, you have the rights to this and all of that. Um, why do you think this is a good idea? You know, um, you know, we're a digital rights management agency, so we work with a lot of historical iconic estates and. In working with the James Dean estate, who my business partner Mark Rosler from CMG Worldwide has represented the family for 40 years, it's been the desire on behalf of the family to extend the legacy of James Dean, mm -hmm. uh, inspire future generations essentially. And so, in those conversations with the estate and with the family, um, we had the desire to to work with them to extend that legacy mm -hmm. through different mediums, whether it's film, or virtual reality, or experiential content for the future. And uh, over the course of time, we've had a number of film studios that have reached out to us about doing James Dean feature films, and it was always a conversation of hiring a big celebrity talent to play that part. Sure. And it's only been recently, with all the you know, innovation, evolution in this technology, that we felt like creating the digital human of James Dean was the ultimate path in doing that. Yeah. So how are you doing it? Is it just all of his, every on-screen role is put into sort of one data set, a data pool, if you will? 
and your AI James Dean pulls from that pool? To some extent, it's a lot of the copyright images and video assets that we have, that the family has and controls. Um, call it the source material. So mm -hmm. it starts there. It starts with aggregating all that source material, running it through machine learning to create that base model. And then you have a lot of other types of innovation that you would apply to it. So if you. But you this know, is James Dean, whatever role he played. I mean, what's interesting here to me, and this is sort of where I, I'm sort of stuck on AI humans, is that you're not getting the essence of who he actually was. You, you don't have the thoughts that were going through his head then, do you? No, we don't. Right. No, we don't. But we have the family, which we try to make it as authentic as possible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we do everything in an ethical and responsible way as much as we can in working with the family. What does that mean? So, leveraging books, leveraging a lot of the copyrighted material, mm -hmm. just the family's consent, working with them to make it as, as solid as we possibly can. Um, and it's a combination, like I said, of different types of innovations, motion capture if we're worrying about the body, mm -hmm. voice synthesis if it's worried about the voice. Um, if we find people that have different, because James Dean passed away 67 years ago, so we're right. limited to assets that existed a long time, just like you getting your deep right. fake or your digital human created with a video that wasn't 4K, but you do have 4K videos that Kathleen could have used. We're right. very limited with the material, the source mm -hmm. material that we have. Uh, what's interesting here is, uh, I want to put up this quote from Keanu Reeves, he is clearly going to try to, he doesn't want people to use his image for this, he said. What's frustrating about uh, that is you lose your agency, when you give a performance in a film, you know you're going to be edited, but you're participating in that. If you go into deep fake land, it has none of your points of view, that's scary. And then he added, it's also fascination, it seems for us, the animals on the planet, like how do we defeat death? And you said Robin Williams also made, actually put in his will, he did not want to have his image used after death. So more actors are thinking about this. Huh? Yeah, more actors are thinking about it. Robin Williams uh, put in his will 25 years, uh, rights of publicity. Nobody could use his rights of publicity for since the date of death. So essentially he's protected himself through including this language in his will. Are more, do we need a, <clears throat> if you don't specifically put it there, are other dead actors just sort of up for grabs? Not necessarily. I, I still yeah. think you need to go through um, the right channels to mm -hmm. secure the rights of publicity um, agreements and licensing deals with those estates to leverage a lot of the copyright material mm -hmm. that, that it takes to create base modeling. But to some extent, yes, there are the bad apples out there that can yeah. leverage a lot of the existing IP that's on the internet to create a digital human of somebody else. Kathleen, what are your ethical guardrails? Well, um, mine in the lab, um, you know, we, uh, you know, we have a uh, um, we have to adhere to our sponsors and, and uh, deliver uh, very specifically milestones and tasks. Um, and your sponsor in this case being the Department of Defense? Uh, Army primarily. sponsor, yep. basically. Uh -huh, yep. Uh, so, you know, ethics, it, though it, it certainly comes up and it's, it's a concern um, along with all the wonderful, amazing, cool things that it can mm -hmm. do, uh, I think to have, you, you have to have a full conversation about it. Our lab uh, doesn't... Um, you know, we don't make constraints based on ethics. Mm -hmm. We also don't um, transition it out into the world, like um, you know, currently, uh, you know, project by project, we will. I've had some people who are like really upset at Microsoft, blaming them for opening, you know, for the first for putting it to the public before everybody was ready. Yeah, I've heard a lot about that too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, but I will say this about the law, about the um, the content itself, and I don't think you know James Dean is maybe the candidate, but. Um, there, there's, there's such a digital footprint that we all have now, mm. and you know, future. You know, I don't know well, how many years everything's moving so exponentially quickly. It's very possible that you could gather a lot of data on any in individual person with all the the photos and the mm. contracts and the letters and the emails and everything. You'd, and an AI based uh, 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 system would actually be able to to pull out a personality from you. You really believe they could, huh? Oh yeah, I do. I mean, uh, uh, Ray Kurzweil did that with his father to a certain extent to, mm. as a test about six years ago. Take a ago. John Adams. You think if we put all the letters that John Adams wrote, which yeah. created yes. a terrific book, yes. that we you could create AI John Adams? I think so. I think you could have a, now I say conversational AI. Yeah. So you could, you could Wow. Make the system, uh, and you know you could you could have a conversation, and, and it could be pretty immersive. You gave me another rationale that said, "Hey, better that the good guys are first than the bad guys are first. And on one hand, I get that. On the other hand, is having an AI arms race a good idea? 
I think we're. I think the cat's out of the bag. It's yeah. just an AI arms race. <laughs> I, you, you I, just don't, like, I, I don't know no who's good and who's ringing, bad. No sense wringing your hands anymore. Uh, well, I think that uh, that uh, smart people uh, need to get together mm. uh, from all walks, uh, whether it be government or scholars or others, and come up with uh, you know constraints and regulation in, yeah. in some something. Yes, I do. Travis, are you convinced the public wants to see dead actors? I do. I feel like um, I wouldn't call them dead actors, but I think they're icons of the past reimagined mm -hmm. in a new frontier. I wouldn't necessarily use terms like dead actors, essentially, but I, I think there's a, a desire to, as I mentioned earlier, just inspire the future generations by leveraging this technology. I have to tell you, it's scary and exciting. Yeah, it I can, think so. Can, I'll not, I'm not going to lie. I'm intrigued. <laughs> And I'm not sure I should be. Oh, it's so intriguing. I'll admit it's that. wonderful, but, yeah. Uh, I appreciate both of you. Travis, Kathleen, thank you. thank you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.